Welcome to this week's very special Q&A episode of The Last Refuge. I am Eugenio, and with me I have... Lydia, Karen, Taryn, Alex, and story consultant Robert. We got the and and the title, all right. (laughs) Yeah! Yeah. (laughs) Um... We're all done. We've we finished our stories. You all got your epilogues. Um, you know, we didn't tie up every loose end. We addressed a bunch of things, but there are mysteries and questions that the cast has been trying to get me and Robert to answer for years now. And uh, we had a little bit of time left over uh, here at this incredible studio, the podcast place. Once again, I, I cannot thank this place in Solomon enough. Oh, here we go. Where are you? Yeah, here we go. <laughs> and truly, I, being able to finish out our show this way has been amazing. So thank you. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna ask some questions. I don't know how long this is gonna last. It may be a 15 minute episode. And if so, I'm sorry that we brought you all here for 15 minutes. <laughs> don't be sorry, never apologize for something like that. I've definitely got more than 15 minutes of questions <laughs> yeah. here. Yeah, but don't have more than 15 minutes of answers. Yeah, that? that's <laughs> Yes, no, 17 and chuckles. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, so cool. yeah, we'll see what it is. You know, uh, if you are watching this live, um, hi from the past. Uh, you know, w- hopefully a good chunk of the company is going to be around in chat, and so we might stick around a little while. Uh, I might hop back on live on the channel and answer some questions for you all if you have them. But for the next little bit, uh, I, I, we're just going to chat about the campaign, about the story, about the questions you have, thoughts. They don't all have to be questions either. Um, but. <laughs> But I know our erstwhile leader, Karen, has a list. I'm retired. Thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> Never yeah. again. Her next character is just going to be the most mousy follower <laughs> type you've ever be. Uh, what type B you've ever seen? I love it. Um, do you want to? Do you want to start with one? Uh, just toss anything out. I think at this point. Oh my gosh, there are so many. Um, okay, sure. Let's start with one that feels like related to what we've just spent a lot of time recording. Yeah. This. That past two days slash however many weeks y'all have been watching. <laughs> um, tell us a little bit about the evolution of the beast. What did you two first oh, think it was going to look like? Really good. How did it? How did it end up becoming what it was? It was so boring at first. Yeah. <laughs> how about um, you lead this? Yeah, one? I mean the the truth is it was originally just going to be a Tarask. Uh, mm. You know. Yes. I... Oh, yes. Classic yeah, Tarask. Tarask. Yeah. Tarask. Uh, yeah what a... <laughs> sure. Sure. For for those who are not quite as as deeply engrossed in in uh, D and D culture, um, a Tarask <laughs> is a very traditional CR uh, challenge rating thirty world ending creature right it is highly i think if as i recall uh you know it's got all of these defenses much like our beast did it has all kinds of regeneration you can only i think kill it with like a wish spell otherwise it comes back there are all of these things right and it's a it's been around since the old editions um and so that was that was what it was going to start as because at that point i mean this show was was my the beginning of my career in gaming and so at that point i had been playing D with some of you for three-ish years and so I was this, I was steeped enough in the game's history and the culture to know that a Tarrasque was kind of iconic and was very dangerous and all of this but I was not experienced enough to even think of coming up with our own thing mm-hmm. yeah yeah I think uh after the first couple seasons especially with the Arcaniums I mean, uh, it was definitely at the Arcanium entrance when we started talking about the schools of magic mm. and yep. we started talking about the elements that we were like, let's shake it up a little bit. Uh, I don't think we had conceptualized an amalgamation of the different elder elementals, which is uh, kind of the stat blocks that we use as a guide. Uh, but eventually that all fleshed together once we realized from our logo that there were four islands, yeah. there was a central island, everything was eventually going to tie together, even from that first Arcanium uh, and then it really got fleshed out probably once we started thinking about the Southern Island and like Glorp and like their history, they would have a lot more knowledge. And so we had to be prepared. Mm-hmm. And so we were like, well, let's okay, it's time, out. I yeah. guess. Let's what was that? On a six or seven. Yeah. I think. yeah. <laughs> let's set on what it looks like. And we did. And I think it's, uh, it, it all came together beautifully. Yeah. It's funny. You can sort of track the evolution of fifth edition too by our things, because one of the things that inspired this version of the beast was Morden Kanan's Tome of Foes. That's where mm-hmm. the original elder elementals were. And mm-hmm. that felt very right to play with. Mm-hmm. Um, also in that book, before we got to, after that book came out, before we got to the elemental idea, 
Um, you all remember the, and I know this is a question for later, but the aliens from the mm -hmm. Western Island way uh -huh. back in the early the seasons, um, there was a time where I was like, oh, maybe it's, maybe it's Hadar. Maybe it's the, you know, some sort of cosmic horror that we're going to play with here. And so we're going to have a lot more star spawn stuff. And, and one of the ancient old ones from the stars is going to be, so it went through a bunch of different ideas. We, we had that brief moment when Chuckles was a big bad as well. <laughs> <laughs> Chuckles has yeah, always been the big that. bad. The let's, biggest let's bad. Let's get into that, my friend. Yeah, yeah. let's do it. Uh, so you want to go ahead and explain your ending to us? I don't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Um, I will give a little bit, I, you know, that, that little epilogue to the epilogue was, was purposefully ba uh, vague. Um, uh, let's see, what do we want to say? So, uh, first of all, I think you all figured out, right, that somehow Brita's child is half glorp. Gross. Um, Disturbing. Which, yeah. <laughs> which might mean a lot of things, right? It might mean, we don't know who the father is. I want to be very clear because apparently some of you thought this. Chuckles is not the father. I, I thought they were together. Um, yeah. Nope. Nope. Uh, so the father may be some Glorp creature, or it might be that Brita has been Glorp for a while. Uh, and that mm. and that, that side of the, of the child's DNA is the Glorp. Um, could, could that be why Uza was like, not Brita? The truth being is part of that system. Yeah, I mean, the truth is, Uza. First of all, Uza's visions were never quite exact, right? right. And mm -hmm. so, even if she had wanted to tell you more, she probably couldn't have. And I don't know that she knows. It might be, but as some of you have already hypothesized too, it might just be that she was pregnant, mm -hmm. right? right? Once mm -hmm. she once she got pregnant, she. I mean, it would have been unreasonable to ask her to be the guardian at Uza's door all right. the time, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Um, so it might have just been that. Okay. Uh, the schools of magic mm. and their associations with the elements. Mm -hmm. Now, when you assigned these, what, what, first of all, first question, when did you assign them and did you have any rhyme or reason to that? Well, uh, I do think we definitely came up with the keys on the Western Island first, yeah. right? So the shimmer scale and the ideas connected to that school and then obviously the spellbinder uh, eventually in Sylphson. So I don't know if necessarily we had tied them to. Nope. No, yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, they kind of came out, uh, and we didn't draw from a hat, but it was that definitely a little bit of a random process. Yeah. Sure. Uh, we also were thinking about, for example, like who, like we wanted to start uh, a little bit balanced between the tieflings and, and obviously the uh, Last Refuge gang. We didn't want one to have, for example, the... Like a, a evocation key, for example, is very powerful because right. it does a lot more damage. So you wanted a little bit balanced. We were think, thinking about that even long term. Yeah. Uh, so maybe a little bit more meta, but yeah. yeah. But in terms of pairing the schools with specific elements, no, not not particularly. Sure. There are there's all kinds of like older edition stuff about like some of the schools used to have opposing schools, right? Yeah. So if yep. you That's specialized in one as a wizard, you couldn't cast the other. And I sort of looked mm -hmm. at some of those pairings, but in the end. You know that system hasn't existed for a bunch of editions, and it mm -hmm. didn't feel it didn't feel like that was what we wanted to base it on either. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, a lot of it was happenstance. A lot of it ended up being storytelling. What was interesting to give the tieflings that wasn't evocation. Mm -hmm. What was interesting for the all glorp to have. Mm -hmm. and what what was left over for the north. Yeah, right. Well, <laughs> and I can't remember if we talked about this in our other mailbags. Mm -hmm. um, one mailbag, mm -hmm. but <laughs> did. We got the choice, if I remember correctly, of which island or we, it was like, we knew, we knew that once we were on one island, you decided that the opposing tiefling party would be on the other or like, yeah, how did that I sort of. I think it was the second place that you all decided to go, mm -hmm. played some role in deciding where the tieflings went. But I, I think I shoved you all on the Western sure. Island yeah. <laughs> because you all didn't know there were other islands for all of season one. Right. Yeah. So having, we, we wouldn't have been able to make that choice. But once we got through season four and you all had to think a little bit more globally then yeah, then your choice for Island two influenced what the tieflings Island two was. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. um, you had talked about Silson, and I wanted to go back and talk about um, ask you guys how how poorly did we fuck <laughs> up Silson? <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, all, all DMs joke about how you know throwing stuff out when a left turn is taken mm -hmm. and this and that. I I don't know that I've ever thrown out that volume yeah. of content <laughs> before. Um, and I'm not upset about it school. because it was an incredible season. It was a great season. Yeah. It was an incredible <laughs> yeah. season. But I mean, I had—I mean, first of all, I had the city mapped. Yeah. Uh, I had NPCs in other places. We had events that were going to happen. And the idea, 
you know, was to, uh, I will also say uh, that we had thought of the concept of the season long before um, Cheeky became a glimmer in her mother's mm -hmm. eye. Um, and so we wanted to change things up and wanted a, a heist, wanted a, an infiltration, wanted a, and then our rogue got pregnant. Uh, <laughs> um, which, but which was still fine because we thought, well, okay, but they still have two solid spell casters, uh, you know, one of whom has wild shapes that can get into tiny forms and we'll be able to sneak around that way. And one of them is very fast, so she'll be able to get escape. And then the other one can, you know, there's, a, there's a certain divination. Too well, <laughs> but, you had the, but you had the shimmer scale, and so that you know you could augury certain things, and you could do you know whatever. What of course at that like point you'd well. also lost your cleric like yeah. right. the well. Um, no, that wasn't. And was, then was you all there. beat down the front door and pissed off the guards and got arrested. And the Here rest is uh, season three. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. Yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, it was content. it was a great season. Mm. I, yeah, I I, I, I love had a lot of fun. Yeah. Sure. And a lot of trauma. Yeah, um, a lot of yeah. trauma. I would love some family history here. Mm -hmm. I would love to know a little bit about our father and our moms. Uh, do our sure. moms know about each other? Do they know about us? Like, I want to know the family history outside of TLR. Yeah, uh, the truth is, I don't, I don't know a ton about their moms. I don't know if you've ever thought too much about it. Um, I don't know. I think maybe now that you can go home and now that Kit's mom is aware of all of you, that's certainly something that you all could pursue. Uh, but I don't I don't really know a ton about your your moms. Um, in terms of Gavrail, I mean, listen, he's a he's a celestial in service to to Denier. Um, you know, he's an ass, but he's a he's an angel and they don't uh, they're not like mortals that he is the he's the embodiment of lawful good devotion to his God, right? And so, I don't know, he did what he was told, uh, which is not an excuse or a whatever. It, it's just a fact. his nature, yeah. Um, he, um, Denier, I don't know how much we've talked about this, but Denier, the original idea, which is far too steeped in like Forgotten Realms lore for it to really matter that much, but the original idea was Denier was beginning to chafe at taking all of the records of the history of that world and being forbidden by the Overgod Ao uh, from directly influencing events and just having to watch. Uh, and he hated that and wanted a new place where he would not be bound by Ao's strictures, uh, where he could, like in eons before, where he could directly influence mortal events. Uh, you know, <laughs> theoretically for good, Denier is a good god, but, uh, you know, absolute power is rough. And even if, even if it's a divine being who is the embodiment of the good alignment, like, that's still rough <laughs> mm -hmm. um yeah uh, so following that thread yeah tell me what did you originally think would happen with the consecration <laughs> oh mm -hmm. i was just thinking that too how much do you remember uh i mean i reviewed it in preparation for this <laughs> <laughs> you did the homework and i did not yeah uh, Your project yeah well we definitely had several several pages of like what would happen if it was consecrated what would happen if you were interrupted consecrating and what would happen if you chose not to. Uh, choosing not to actually wasn't the one that we spent more time on. I no. Think. We thought consecrating was going to happen. Uh, I think our original... Did you want us to consecrate the temple at that point, that day? At that point, it felt a little weird, yeah. I think, if you had chosen to consecrate. Yeah. But I don't think I want... I, I don't think I realized at that point the full, like scope of the consequences of that choice and how this would have been a weirdly religious campaign. Yeah. Uh, so I didn't want either at that point. I was, I felt more prepared mm. for consecration, I think. Mm. Uh, but no, I didn't want either at that point. I think we also had much more in detail with uh, Gavreo and Abydos interacting with the last refuge in the world mm -hmm. a little bit more actively like obviously when uh the the tieflings they act consecrated their temple and abadish showed up in the uh astral plane briefly uh continuing to consecrate or not consecrate would have also brought in gavrail or like uh if abadish had been stronger if the tieflings have been able to do more etc cetera, etc cetera. so there was several pages of documents about how they might interact uh, or how there would be like a race between the two groups. Yeah. We initially at one point briefly oh, yeah. thought about having 
four other players uh, work out the tiefling side of events. Mm -hmm. uh, so then it would be just two competing storylines uh, racing to like <laughs> on, like on recording on podcast. Yeah. Yeah, part of me just died even thinking about yeah. that. Just <laughs> about that in retrospect. But you don't scheduling alone. That's yeah, exactly right. right. That doesn't yeah. sound like a dream. <laughs> no. As everyone flies to Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that reminds me, Taryn. Uh, yeah. Why aren't you with us today? I have COVID. <laughs> <laughs> we're sorry to miss you, but we're glad we yeah. could have come this way. Two days before you all arrived, mm. and I'm so. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so right, I mean, it, it, you know, I know we made a lot of noise about it at the time, but all these years later, we can reiterate that it is absolutely true. We did not know, and that was a live show too. You <laughs> you yeah. well, did not know what was going to happen and it was wild and i no. loved it yeah have we ever done anything that you actually expected us <laughs> yeah, to do every once in a while i mean you all especially in this last season you all made a lot of choices that we hoped you would make okay. in terms of like whose glort person went to what island mm -hmm. who led what part of the fleet mm -hmm. that sort of thing mm -hmm. we, we got to know you better as players <laughs> <laughs> speaking as just like as someone who plays D D rather than who dms a lot mm. I, I appreciate that as a player yeah, yeah. 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 and writers and you know who know their group or know yeah. the table sure. you know that's it's just so much more appreciated yeah. on my end you got another one for us, kid? I have a Karn. million. <laughs> I see this list. It's long. <laughs> I have so yeah. many questions. I'm just trying to decide which direction we want to go and sure, what's sure. like most um, related. You know, I, I think we've kind of touched on this. And I'm just curious. Can you tell us what we accomplished by siphoning off the elemental oh, sure. powers? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Let me. Secrets revealed. This is what yeah. I'm here yeah, for. Yeah, yeah. The <laughs> crunchy mechanics of the beast. Yeah. Uh, so first of all, I'm pretty feet. sure... Oh, I screwed that up. Wasn't that doubled because they didn't do it? I forgot to write that down. It doesn't change anything. Yeah, well, I mean, it doesn't. Okay, so one of the things that you did, uh, one of, it doesn't change anything, you're right. Um, one Zebo of the things that it shows did up was and it's, we redo the whole season. Yeah, yeah right. We have to redo the Zebo! final. <laughs> it's, uh, it speeds, uh, each of its four speeds would have been doubled for each thing that you didn't get. So technically it's burrow speed was 60 feet. I, I have 30, but it's fine. Um, but yeah, it's fly and swims would have been 180. Wow. Uh, and it's walk and burrow were six. <laughs> Thank God I didn't swim. Oh my God. Uh, yeah, you all kept it pretty close to the center of the island. Um, so let's see, the earth one that you did fail was, uh, it increased its AC by three. So it's original AC was 21. Um, the, uh, and then immunity to poison reduced to uh, resistance. Uh, the fire shield uh, just, or sorry, the fire node just took care of the immunity to fire damage rather than resistance. Y'all, the phoenix is shitty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I know. Wow. That's why I kept saying, let's bring the phoenix out because yeah. it's the yeah. worst one. It is the worst one. <laughs> the phoenix one. is shitty, but it's also the immortal one, which we also took out. Oh, uh, yeah. In theory, oh, yeah. if you hadn't siphoned, <laughs> it would have reincarnated itself. We have, I mean, you all gave us, obviously, we played those those ancient elementals in the 200th yeah. episode and we had those stats and we reviewed them ad nauseum before this season <laughs> nice. was recorded and i remember taryn's specific note in an email that said if in all caps if one of them produces an egg <laughs> destroy the egg but well, don't touch it, don't touch it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. i also have to say like so we, I, I will admit this, we wrote the four island obstacles, right, for what you all needed to get through to siphon. And we wrote the Western Island hoping that Brio would go through because it was in our minds. I mean, of course, you guys could have done what you wanted, but in our minds, it was a stealth mission. But we wrote it forgetting that since Glorp creatures we have yeah. established can't cast higher than ninth level spells... In terms of character level, that means a Glorp creature can't be above 10th level, and rogues don't have reliable talent at 10th level, <laughs> which meant that when she rolled below a 10, it was just below a 10. Yeah. Oh, it was rough. I was so frightened that it was going to be an immortal beast. Um, all right, the water, the water node uh, siphoning it changed the cold damage, and it would have had 75 to 100 more hit points if you oh. hadn't siphoned the water okay. node. Hello. Uh, and then the air siphon uh, was the lightning damage. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm wrong. It was the air siphon that changed its speeds. If the air siphon oh. hadn't been done, all of the four speeds would have been doubled. Right. <laughs> That's what it was. Um, and that was it for the nodes. But then, of course, you saw, like, there was a basic attack, there was a special attack, and there was a legendary action for each element sure mm -hmm. crunchy numbers love yeah. it oh my god <laughs> i mean all right karen what's next okay i'm gonna ask another big question because 
most of these are silly things. Okay. Um, but I do have one that I I'm very interested to hear the answer to, and sure. I suspect you might be as well. Probably. I want to hear what we missed in the prophecies. Mm. Or what Ooh. you were trying to what were you trying to have us figure out if we missed anything? Not much, yeah. I don't think, no. right? I don't think we really missed. Can you tell we us what they enough. each meant in case we missed one? Um, or figured out separately? I mean, if the original ones God, I don't know that I really remember <laughs> those very well. The I four mean, birds. The you were the, the birds. Um you were the birds and you had uh I remember part of that was that in consecrating, I don't remember exactly what the prophecy was, but I remember that we were trying to tell you that that was the beginning of if you consecrate, bad things might happen. You might release this thing. You might, mm -hmm. you know. So mm -hmm. that was definitely part of the first one. Um, and then in terms of the more recent one about the fight with the beast, I mean, you got most of it. You you chased down mm -hmm. the elemental siphons. Mm -hmm. uh, that was the the petals and the whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't, I think you guys got most of it. I mean, there may have been little tiny things, but they weren't significant enough for me to remember them. Do you remember anything else? Uh, if you had questions about the second vision of the original set that involved the tiefling mm -hmm. killing everyone oh. and getting the keys. <laughs> that one, I think, was Yeah, that was, a, in case you want us to interpret <laughs> that one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think we're okay. Yeah. Uh, just speaking of prophecy, I think we had questioned whether or not we were going to cast yeah. prophecy either right before this or right after in the epilogue. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I decided not to, but obviously the the magic was depleting from the shimmer scale. Yeah. What do you think that next that last prophecy would have been? I think actually you would have gotten if you if you tried it before the magic faded, and that was the first tier thing, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it lasted a while. And if you decided, I think you would have gotten a single vision that was uh that was sort of everything, right? Because this world, your prophecies were tied to to this world and the occurrences on this world. Mm -hmm. And for the first time in millennia, there's it's sort harmony. of infinite, po well, harmony, but infinite possibilities. There was only so much that was ever mm. going to happen when civilization ended every thousand years. Mm. And wow. so the divination magic of that was was able to focus in. It's why you got it first, right? Mm. Like that's such a, a limited scope of possibilities for the key. But now that's, that's open. And so I think you would have seen a hundred different possible futures. Mm. Mm. All of them glorpy. All of them glorpy. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of glorp, I, because it was me, uh, what, <laughs> I know I threw a wrench in things when I drank the glorp, but. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jesus. What, like, how would we have. Don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> how would we have met the all glorp slash would Mirko, have we, would he, we have been introduced to Mirko in that way where he was actually escaping and I helped to get him back. What do you remember? I remember little bits, but what do you remember? Uh, not that specific. I know we had plans for, there was always gonna be interactions with the Oglorp. Yeah. yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So the Oglorp was always, notably the Oglorp's mm, influence on this world was always limited by the beast. So the Oglorp yeah. has always played the long game uh, in any way in we which just unleash the all glory, <laughs> <laughs> in, which is, in which is to somehow find the removal of the beast. So it's worked for many, many years to build these glory bombs. It's made allies with people who are clearly against the beast or at least want to control it, contain it, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. Um, so it always was going to make contact with you one way or another, whether as a foe, whether as an ally, I think we were leaving to the situation yeah. and that kind of presented itself perfectly when you decided to <laughs> drink Lord, it the glorp mm -hmm. uh, and uh, give it a, a foot in the door. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Mirko was always going to be down there on the yeah. Southern Island oh, yeah, because we, we had determined how the tiefling party had sort of split mm -hmm. up from the North. Mm -hmm. So he was always going to be there. And I, I think was always going to get glorified. Yes. Uh, you would have met Hush because that was your connection. Mm -hmm. That was the way we got you there in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, but, but I honestly, this is another season that was not completely changed like season three, but I, it was a big swing. Mm -hmm. And I honestly, I mean, again, we could look through the notes, but I honestly don't remember. I think it was a lot about, um, I do think there was a, you know, you were still sort of searching for keys at that point. So that was the main point of contact, mm -hmm. the main point of contact with the beast. Yeah. I mean, with the Alglorp right. would have been about the keys yeah, really, sure. rather than about <laughs> what it did to the steer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <that. laughs> I have one, one more question about the Southern Island yeah. and then I'll let somebody else ask. Yeah, yeah. What was the original language 
before we decided it was Esperanto. Oh, I, I, well, the reason we decided it was Esperanto was because I didn't care. I mean, pick. <laughs> <laughs> Desperation. <laughs> I have, well, I have a little yeah. bit of a back to the Western Island. Sure. I'm so fascinated by Uza and Rithmala and Guard, yeah. Um, yeah. just yeah. as like beings and how they exist and whatnot. And yeah. I know that Guard has found a new home in the Plane of Fire, which is totally fine. He's there. Yeah. Um, yeah, where's Rithmala? Where'd she go? To? Have you made a decision mm. about where no, she went? No, I mean, she is eternal. Uh, she is also Scott. I assume they're all uh, eternal. They I, they are right now. And, and I, I want to get back to that about Uza in a minute. Yes. But for Rithmala, you know, she... Um, she had a connection with the Alglort for a while, and that was enlightening for her, right? They are both eternal beings in a lot of ways. They both have very strong opinions about what they want in the world and the power and the direction that they want the world to go. I, I don't honestly know if those uh, desires are at odds or in line. I don't know. Uh, mm. I haven't really thought that through in a big way. So I think just like the Alglorp, I think Rithmal is probably biding her time and figuring out whether she is going to continue to remain allied with the Alglorp. Maybe she's giving you all a little bit of time to sort of move off and forget about things so that she doesn't feel threatened. Uh, or if she needs to find a way to deal with the Alglorp. You know, maybe the Alglorp is the new beast and Rithmal is the new Alglorp. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. Ah! Um, <laughs> do you think I know? scary. <laughs> I almost imagine, like, if she ever figures out how to travel between planes and worlds i think she would make a nice well, yeah, politician you, op you open the door for that possibly <laughs> yeah yeah oh, true. i mean for what it's worth she's also i mean she is enchantment magic embo uh, embodied but she is pretty limited to enchantment magic, yeah right so. um as for uza i mean i am i'm, I'm kind of curious what you all would think she you know she is also eternal but she does not have nearly the pleasant existence that rithmala and even guard had you know, she struggles. Her mm -hmm. her every minute is torn between time. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't know. What do you all think? I mean, I I question like what is going to make her most comfortable. You know what I mean? She's such an anxious little thing, rightly <laughs> so. And uh, I don't know. I I just I would want her to be as happy and comfortable as possible. Yeah. And if that means that she stays in that crystal tube. You know, I don't know. I mean, I think it, I, there's no way for us to have ever released her from uh, released, like uh, evaporating her, like making it so. Yeah, she doesn't I, exist. Well, that's what I was going to say. I mean, I think I, unless you all and, and I don't know that this would be possible. You know, this is a research project you can undertake that I can't tell you what you would eventually succeed. And I don't know. But unless you did some pretty major research about reversing an arcane calamity, you know, the option is to end her. Mm -hmm. uh, and you could you could do that, I think. Murder usually could... works. Murder, yeah. Yes. Murder's a good backup plan. Mm -hmm. It is yes. a good backup plan. Maybe she could live in the shimmer scale. Maybe she's, like, confined in that little... Okay, never mind. We'll move on. <laughs> it seems worse uh, somehow. <laughs> yes, somehow. Bad. I... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I have I have a question about the Arcanium. Okay. Um, what's the answer to the riddle? Thank you. <laughs> yes. And the follow-up really. question is, what good shit did we miss in the arcade? Yes. Uh, so the <laughs> one possible way you could have gotten to the answer is, uh, what would the other person, the other door, say uh, if I asked if you told the truth? Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, I go cross-eyed. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> um, one of the doors I think had a very deadly little construct behind yes. it, yeah. uh, like some sort of little iron sphere with blades. Horrifying. Uh huh. What was behind the other one? The maze for one. No. Well, no. <laughs> I don't want to ever talk about the maze ever again. <laughs> no, I do think there was something good behind there. I don't remember if it was yeah. an item or it might have just been like a hint to the rest of the. Arcana. It was definitely a magic item. I don't know, remember what yeah. it was because you know it, what? I have ultimately insignificant. But this notebook might actually no, have that answer. I while do you want all to know what we missed so we can feel sad about oh, it. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, let me see. The, season four, The Temple. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, dun, 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 what the God? Oh, this is so funny to look at. Here's where I've got little sketches of the guts go in East Door. Ooh, we, got, <laughs> we got weird. The guts, yeah. 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 aka yeah. the rope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Comments on action, Courage. air horn, episode, or, uh, season four, episode seven. Beep boop. 
<laughs> Alternatively, thick with two C's. I, yeah. Yeah, that's I think that's actually that's what it was what called. It yeah. 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 I think that is what we went with. The sack, little bird. I don't think I have it in here. I would have to go back to the in our Google Drive. Yeah. yeah. We'll drop it in the chat. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there, there you go. There you go. By then we'll have looked for it. Um, yeah. What else? Well, did we talk about this in the mailbag? Where did you come up with the Wizard of Oz thing? Was, was that Robert? Robert? Uh, was that you? No, it was probably me. No, it was you. Yeah. <laughs> um, I knew I wanted to have, I mean, in various ways, I've always liked the ideas of adventures running into other adventures. But in this world, that wasn't really a possibility for many, many reasons. Uh, so as soon as we established that this Arcanium had one construct, uh, I think the idea it popped in my head that we would make him or them have other constructs that they just keep their time or like humor themselves with. Uh, and then we needed something to unify them theme wise. Uh, and there's four of them, and somehow that led to the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> D, &D loves the Wizard of Oz. What can I say? I love it. Yeah. 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 I mean, it stuck too because then when we get to the Southern Island, we had the the yellow brick road, oh, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I almost made Highway. the joke when you were doing the like reports, and there was the tornado with uh -huh. the building. I was like, oh, and we see some little striped feet yeah. sticking yeah. out from under. Well, it. and that was definitely. Oh, I mean, God. you can see in our document yeah. notes. He says, like the Wizard of Oz, uh, yeah. the yeah, buildings yeah, yeah. are flying. <laughs> so yes, yeah. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I should have. <laughs> okay. I must know. Yeah. What happened when Zagara was possessed? What was going on there? Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. 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 So there were a couple of things. Um, so when Zagara was originally possessed, I think that was a function of the Enclave, right? Yes. That gave you all a message. Yeah. So honestly, that was probably Octavia or one of her one of her other spellcasters mm -hmm. sending you all a message. They'd been watching you for a while, as you all figured out eventually. Mm -hmm. um, and that was that was them finally saying, you know, fuck it, we've we've intervened as it is. And and things are rough. There are some things that you know could really go wrong. So let's get in touch directly. Um, and Zagara was just, Poor Zagara. just had a very bad wisdom save or charisma save, and so it was easy to possess him. <laughs> Poor Zagara. Justice for Zagara. <laughs> so much sympathy for that little thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, moss lurker. Yeah. So, on that vein. Who the fuck was Chuckles? Like I'm I, not telling you. I, he was uh, in part of the mysterious epilogue. But it does seem that he might have been a glorp person all along. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Mm -hmm. Gosh. Okay. Perhaps. Okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, I mean, I, I think it's reasonable enough to realize now that the Enclave was not the only group that was watching you for a long time. Chuckles is actually all Glorp's real personality. That's <laughs> <laughs> Chuckles controls the all Glorp. <laughs> <laughs> Terrifying. When he, <laughs> the yep. entire Southern Ireland goes, <laughs> oh, that's so creepy. So oh, so creepy. Oh, no. Gross. All right. We teased it earlier. I know the yeah. fans are waiting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've been waiting for this so long. For five years. Tell us about the alien storyline. <laughs> <laughs> and also the monkeys. And the monkeys. <laughs> yeah, the monkeys oh, were, yeah. Uh, uh, the monkeys were, I think they, they were a stat block that came out in Tomb of, when Tomb of Annihilation came out, actually. They're Chalton monsters. Mm -hmm. um, and that was part of, I was trying to pull a bunch of um, non-standard beasts and monstrosities to populate the island to make it feel full and alive and inhabited and interesting. A bunch of the stuff, particularly in the Western Island, uh, Western and Eastern Islands, actually, that you all ran across are from various Cobalt Press monster books, the Tome of Beasts, Tome of Beasts 2, and the Creature Codex. Uh, hey, thanks, Wolfgang and crew. You all are the best. Mm -hmm. um, but that one, when Tomb of Annihilation came out, there were a lot of things that I hadn't seen before. They may have been old canon D&D, but I didn't know. So the the four-armed gorillas were, were from that. <laughs> and then the aliens, like I said, at that point, uh, Morgan Cain's Tomb of, Tome of Foes had just come out, and I was really fascinated by the star spawn entries in there and the idea of this cosmic horror and these sort of unknowable mysterious creatures that were not just from another plane or another world, but another sort of conceptualization of the universe, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, the and the... <laughs> <laughs> um, and so the crater was from, uh, you know, their crashed ship, uh, and there were the little ones that you all fought that had the weird wisdom safe thing and lots of teeth. And then I think mm -hmm. you encountered some of the more sentient. One of the big ones. Conscious ones, yeah. the big yeah. ones. And and they're, uh, spoiler, that isn't a spoiler because we're done, but um, they were not the biggest, right? There were others uh, for a time out there. They're gone now. Uh, but that was, that was, we, 
we're moving away from the Tarrasque as the beast, but I didn't know where we wanted to land. So I was like, let's plant this. And if it grows, it grows. And if we have to lop it off at the base, well, then we'll do that. <laughs> and that is what we did. <laughs> I think that's how writing works, yeah. Yeah. to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, Ooze Island slash Southern Island originally was a dinosaur, like Dinotopia type. Oh, dino I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, basically, <laughs> basically that island was always <laughs> destined to be Celeste Conowich inspired. I <laughs> don't know if you will ever see this or hear this Celeste and Hannah Rose, actually. Uh, but Ooze Island came from an idea from a panel at a PAX one year. Uh, but even before that, Dinotopia is a very Celeste idea. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, the Well. Mm. The Well was nothing. I don't know how else to fucking say <laughs> this. The Not Well true. was never anything. It was, it was an interesting thing out of one of Mike Shea's like <laughs> interesting encounters thing. And then you all ran with it. The Well was nothing. It had my notes in if it. If you had consecrated the Well, a bunch of fucking demons would have popped out <laughs> and taken over the world. Right. And I would have killed you all for making the Well that's, a big deal. That's, I think that's we all we make. wanted to know. <laughs> yeah, well, was what would have happened kind if of he had consecrated the Well. The, uh, a bunch of demons would have had a, an anchor in this world like you wanted Denier and Abadis to have yeah. and it would have been a fucking nightmare uh -huh. <laughs> but it did turn out to be a volcano which also is very above interesting. a yeah. volcano it, it yeah. itself was not a volcano <laughs> to be clear yeah. didn't you say something along you something was going to be in the well yeah i mean we joked oh that. also that that a deck of many things was at the bottom yeah. of the oh, well yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we didn't use our bag of beans no. I know. oh yeah. you never used beans thank god i was so sure that that fucking mummy's tomb was going to come up <sighs> And I even highlighted it in my notes <laughs> and like made it like giant a giant letters. letter point font. Yeah. <laughs> um, we got about five minutes left. What other big burning questions do we have? And like I said, we can save some of these and, and hopefully some of uh, a good chunk of us will be around live when we're screening this and we can we can answer more then. But what do we have for our last five minutes here? I only have two questions oh, left. Oh, great. I love it. Right. What are they? The first one is I just because we never learned too much about the Orc City. Yeah. Mm. Just a little bit about what that would have been like if we had ever gotten there. I'm really glad that you didn't. Um, I had some ideas for Gungra and the surrounding villages. And uh, like I said, a lot of the Western Island was designed when I knew enough about D when I had enough D&D &D rope to hang myself with. Uh, and, you know, over the years, I have learned a lot about where a lot of D&D &D races came from and the racist tropes that created them. Mm -hmm. uh, but back when I was designing the beginning of this campaign, I wasn't aware of a lot of that. And so I used a lot of those tropes. Mm. Uh, so yeah, I'm real glad y'all never made it to Gungra. <laughs> mm. Mm. Um, but uh, you know, but they did have a society, a, a clearly defined matriarchal society out there. And, and there were, there were details there in Gungra, but um, it's, it's, it's for the past. Yeah. <laughs> Very fair. Yeah. All right, does anyone have another question? I have uh, one more question okay. um, because I decided not to ask about the fighter sister's name. But my question <laughs> is what were the um, what were the other moon effects that were Patreon submitted? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Fans oh, yeah. While DM is this. looking that up, do you know what the fighter sister's name is? Uh, we've Ale decided it's Jan. Jan? She <laughs> we decided everybody, Simyaza. Jan Yaza, <laughs> Flick Yaza, and Marco Yaza. And then every Marco just Yaza. Sim for short. Rolls off the top. Yeah, Marco Yaza. Yeah. I don't know what the problem is. <laughs> this. Uh, all right. So the patrons submitted uh, moon magics were, we got most of them. So one of them was uh, uh, Naked Flick. <laughs> yes. Gear, uh, things, uh, gear modified by conscious effort vanishes for a minute. Um, one. <laughs> We're gonna do the most. Uh, I think we might have gotten this one where you the caster rolls a d6 uh, and and they uh, basically trade spell slots with other casters within 60 or 30 feet. So either the caster would have Ooh. given up a spell slot to another caster for the rest of the day or vice versa. Oh, um, wild switch bodies. <laughs> It came up. That's <laughs> oh my god. I mean, we'll talk about well, yeah. Anyway, um, and then I also think this might have happened, although I don't think you ever got to use it uh, because I think you rolled it on a spell that didn't deal elemental damage. But we had somebody submit basically the transmute spell option, uh, except mm. it was automatic. You roll a d6, and the spell damage type would change based on your roll. Oh, cool. yeah. The the two that we never got. Uh, one of them. <laughs> One of them is all spellcasters within 40 feet of the current caster must make a DC 15 constitution saving throw or be magnetically bound to the caster for one minute. It's fun. Okay. 
Amazing. Um, and then the other one was the magic caster. And this is the one that I was, I was really hoping Kit would roll at some point. The caster is suddenly terrified of trees for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> for an hour? Uh -huh. <laughs> this includes being reluctant to go near. Wait a minute, I have to read the whole thing because it's so funny. Uh, doo -doo -doo. This includes being reluctant to go near them, being frightened of the sound of branches moving in the wind, and possibly viewing any leaves that fall from the branches as an attack. Oh, <laughs> Adorable. <laughs> when the effect ends, the person still remembers the fear that they experienced and has to live with it. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, that feels really pointy. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Yeah. Uh, we got one more. Is, was that your last one? Or was it where you got one more? It was one more. Go ahead. My last question is very silly. I'm I ready. Think that we came up with this at Thanksgiving dinner. Oh, I'm so excited. What is it? Is it about the I want to know. No. Stop it. Okay. What is it? We have two minutes. I want to know from you two. Yeah. What lessons do you think the four of us have Oh, I don't think you learned today? a damn thing. Thank you so much for listening yeah. to this final episode of The Last <laughs> Refuge. Oh, it has been an incredible five and a half year journey, and we are so grateful to all of you for supporting us, for listening, for sharing, and signal boosting. It's changed our lives, and we appreciate you. We don't know what's next in store for this group, and it probably won't be soon, because Daddy needs a break. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, but Keith and I, uh, on our socials, uh, we're all doing cool things, and, and, you know, we'll be around. We'll see what happens next for the crew, but for right now, we're all going to take Turk or we're all going to take, take, <laughs> see what I mean? We're all going to take a well-deserved break. Uh, thank you so much for coming out. Those of you who are, here, who are here watching with us live, thank you for those who are listening uh, on Thursday, the day after, and years down the line as these videos and odd, uh, podcast audios stay out in the world. We appreciate you so very much. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, on that note, I also want to just quickly thank everyone in this group as well. Uh, I don't know if everyone knows the history of this gaming group, but they've been playing together for almost a decade at this point. Yeah, about eight years uh, uh, for me and, and Alex and Lydia and Taryn. And you brought me in just to provide some assistance on the story. And I mean, everyone here is so familial. I just really appreciate being a small part of this. So. Oh, more than small part. <laughs> Couldn't have done it without you. Thank you so much to this man here, story consultant Robert Hub. Thank you for all of you for watching and listening over the years. Thank you to all of you for playing and telling beautiful stories and creating these rich, incredible characters that we all know and love now really deeply. Thank you to the Podcast Place and Solomon for letting us live out our dreams here for our final 10 episodes. We cannot thank you all enough. And as always, thanks all of you for listening. I have been your friendly neighborhood dungeon master, DM Jazzy Hands, and with me I've had... Lydia as Bizdira. Karin as Kit. I can't talk. <laughs> <laughs> Taryn as Bria. Now let her do it. <laughs> Taryn as Bria. Alex as Flick. And story consultant Robert as... Oh, Oglerp? <laughs> <laughs> That's Robert. Happy gaming, y'all. <laughs> <laughs>